Ladies, gentlemen, children, friends, and families, be very careful with your desires in these last days, and also take heed to everything that the Lord concede to your discernment. God allow events to transpire all around us so that our eyes may be open and to examine ourselves whether we are in the faith or not. We are surrounded on every side with draconian agendas, apostasies, deception, abominations, and the beast system being implemented upon us. If you refuse to take heed to these things after that the Creator have brought you to the knowledge of the truth, He will allow you to continue on your path of disobedience, which will not end well. Having said that, friends, welcome to TRJC and Time Ministry. Friends, I do believe that we are living in the earth's final moment. When you see mankind directly defying their creator who granted them life, please know that the end of everything is at hand. A significant event took place last week, which should open the eyes of all Christians around the world. Before I share it with you, I must first set the stage. We all know the cause behind the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah in the past that made them an example for us today. In Mark chapter 10, verse number 6 and 7, Jesus said, But from the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. Genesis 1, 27 and 28 is a second witness that exhibit God's sanctity of marriage between a man and a woman and commended them to be fruitful and multiply. The Lord knew that the behavior between men and women would be strange in the last days. So he issued an explicit warning against such behavior. We find that in the book of Leviticus chapter 20, verse number 13, the word of God says, if a man lie with mankind, as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. This is the most vivid warning that no one can say I didn't understand as it relate to that lifestyle. But in case you are still in denial, in Jude chapter 1, verse number 7, God's word says, Even as Sodom and Gomorrah in the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication, in going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. There is no escape for this type of behavior, because it's not just a sin, but an abomination. This is the strongest language found in the Bible in terms of sinful acts, one that has to be destroyed, as repentance is the only way out. Well, the government of the world with the exception of a few, legalize this abomination and expect everyone to embrace it. We all know what the end result will be. So how serious should you take your government? Should you even acknowledge anything they say these days? However, that's for you to decide. But here is the danger for those of you who support this lifestyle as did the government. In Romans chapter 1 verse number 26, 27, and 32 we read, for this cause, God gave them up unto vile affection, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burn in their lust toward one another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error which was meet. Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Friends, look around. What do you see? Men and women changing their nature. Men burning in their lust toward one another. Men with men, women with women, as the word of God predicted. Not only these people are worthy of death, according to scripture, but also those who support that lifestyle, which is why you got to be very careful with your desires and actions in these last days. With that being said, check out this headline. Pope Francis signaled openness to blessing for same-sex couples. Yep, you heard that right. Pope Francis opened the door Monday for some Catholic priest to bless same-sex union. The Pope said, God cannot bless sin. But on Monday, the Pope signaled that there could be exceptions to that stance. 
It implies that the church does indeed recognize that holy love can be exist between same gender couples. This is startling, friends. Who gave this pope such power to bless a union that God himself classified as abomination? This is a direct challenge from Pope Francis to the Creator. Not only did the Pope claim to be God on earth and the power to forgive sin in the past, now he is flexing his weak muscles to bless what God has cursed. Pope Francis opened a global summit of bishops on the future of the Catholic Church in the Vatican today. The pontiff opened the meeting with mass this morning. During services, he urged the church to welcome everyone and lower ideological barriers. CBS News foreign correspondent Chris Lisse joins us now from Rome with more on this. Chris, there are big issues on the agenda for this meeting, and, and they include controversial ones, like including discussion of um, whether to bless same-sex unions. Tell us more. Absolutely, Errol. Uh, yeah, so that's the big bombshell that dropped right before this synod even got started. Earlier this week, Pope Francis published a message that he wrote in response to some conservative Catholics who were looking for clarity on this question of whether or not they could provide blessings to, to same-sex unions. And the answer that Pope Francis gave, long story short, it was kind of convoluted, but it was, yes, you can in certain circumstances. WGN News at 9. Pope Francis suggesting it might be possible for the Catholic Church to bless same-sex unions. This is the spirit of Antichrist. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse number 3 and 4, we read, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that they shall not come, except they come falling away first, and that men of sin be revealed the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Friends, I believe the Pope has fulfilled this scripture along with many other scriptures that described and revealed the characteristics of the Antichrist. For those of you who are Catholics, what other evidence are you waiting for to run from the snare of Satan to Jesus Christ? In Revelation chapter 18, verse number 4, 5, and 8, God called upon his people to come out of that satanic church, saying, And I heard another voice from heaven, saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death, and mourning, and famine. She shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judges her. Friends, it is time to stand with Jesus Christ as we're approaching the final hours of this earth's history. Now is the time to call upon the Lord to sanctify and consecrate our hearts and minds that we may not be moved when the mark of the beast system is enforced. Because we need to endure all the hell that Satan will bring upon this earth in order to be saved. And the Holy Spirit will not always be available to prepare us for that day. The day of salvation is now. Because we don't know what will happen in the next few hours or tomorrow. So treat today as if it was your last. And surrender all to Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you all. Please subscribe. And I will see you in the next one.